Welcome to Fukushima. I am standing in the Iwaki Marine Tower, which gives you a fantastic view of all the great places that you can explore while you're here. There is so much to see. Let's not waste any time. Let's get after it. It's worth noting that Iwaki is just two and a half hours away from Tokyo by car. If you're going to the top of the Iwaki Marine Tower, going to a Daruma Festival, perhaps exploring the local aquarium, you're going to need energy to do all of that. So the first thing we did was hunt out a delicious cafe at Iwaki Station. The name of this cafe is Break, and it's quite popular with the locals. I could see that as soon as I walked in, well-frequented, made me really, really happy to see that. It has a few specialties, but the one that particularly drew me to it was that it has an oversized sandwich which uses 1.5 loaves of bread in its creation, if you can believe that. You think you know how big it's going to be until it drops on the table, and I think no matter who you are, you're going to be kind of surprised by the size of this thing. You're not going to be disappointed. Now, if your eyes felt a little bit bigger than your stomach once it drops onto your table, I think there's no shame in sharing this with a friend, although if you're really hungry, you probably crush your way right through to the other side of it. As for the ingredients, lightly toasted bread, so nice, the vegetables were super fresh, everything was good. I would highly recommend checking this out if you were to drop in to break. Now the encore that we went with was an oversized parfait brimming with many different kinds of fruit splashed with whipped cream all over and of course a delectable cherry on top. No one I think has ever left break feeling hungry and I say that with great great confidence. I certainly didn't. There's real charm here. The little lady who was running the store that day was so kind to us, kept coming over making sure that we were okay, everything was all right. Really really nice pleasant laid-back atmosphere well worth dropping into if you're around the station with great value for what it is that they're selling. Even got a nice little fist bump from that kind little lady at the end after being super fueled for the rest of the day. Who among us doesn't enjoy getting to be a kid again on some occasion? And that's what I felt when I went to visit the Iwaki Aquarium. I haven't been to something like this since I was probably 10 years old and it was never on the scale that I found here. Also pleasantly surprised to see that they actually had a lot of fuzzy, cute land animals that you could observe. Another part of the experience was seeing feeding time in the enclosure, where the caretakers would throw chunks of the food for the day into the water, and then you would watch them, the animals, rush up to the glass and make off with their delicious lunch. They looked very, very happy, and I feel like that was indicative of the kind of care that they were getting. The aquarium itself is separated into two buildings. The larger of the sea creatures can be found in the second building, and before we even went in, we commented that it sounded like there were dinosaurs in there because of some of the incredible loud sounds that you could hear. It was peaceful watching all the fish swim around, and a real joy to explore because there were so many rooms that had been modeled after different parts of specific warmer climates, making it something of a vacation from the cold, which was very, very welcome for me. A definite highlight for me is when we entered the sea lion enclosure, where at first it was only in my mind that I felt like a kid. Here I actually got to behave like one, playing along with them as they were swimming around, and it started to feel like a little bit of a Terrence Malick movie, actually. Again, they looked really, really well cared for, happy, chubby, fat, and the attendants giving them a really, really good lunch. Lots of different amounts of fish for them to eat. The hottest part of the whole aquarium would come next, where it was basically tropical inside the building, and I had to take off my jacket to not overheat. All the plants, the fauna that you saw, and then there were aquariums, which were filled with all kinds of fish. What I was not expecting to see was that actually in some of these aquariums, near the end of the tour as you were walking through, you actually saw scuba divers who were maintaining the tanks, looking after them, feeding the sea anemones, and cleaning all the walls, contributing to this idea that the aquarium is lovingly attended to, and just the people again making the experience so, so wonderful. 
If I were to return to Iwaki, I would go here again and definitely spend more than the time that we had available to us in this visit. Ah, if only I had better luck, I've thought many times. Well, Japan has an answer for that in the form of Daruma. Now, rather than me give you an explanation, because my information is secondhand at best, we got to go to a festival that was going on in Iwaki where they claim to make the real Daruma, the real doll of luck. And we got to sit down for a quick conversation with a family that's been doing it for many, many generations and answered all the burning questions that I had about this particular tradition. Iwaki Daruma is Takahashi Soichiro. はい、僕ね、4代目になります。私は とは、well, there you have it. Whether you are an aspiring academic, an athlete, or for whatever reason that you might need a little bit more luck in your life, if you can make it out to the Daruma Festival in Iwaki, rest assured you will be getting the highest quality luck provided by a generational family who truly knows the business of fortune. I absolutely love seafood and as a coastal town Iwaki is a fantastic place for you to enjoy some of the best that Japan has. We are here today at Urokoju and we are going to try some of the wonderful selections that they have. We got a big order and if I anticipate correctly I think it's going to be absolutely delicious. What about this beautiful looking presentation? A theme to coming to Iwaki can be enjoying the Dekamori food that they have here, which is this quite large style that you get. If you've had a fantastic day touring around and exploring, and you're very hungry, don't worry, you'll be able to walk out of here full. I'm excited. Okay. Mmm. Mmm. Crispy, light, flaky, everything you want in a delicious piece of tempura. With a veritable feast laid before us, it was a challenge but a welcome one to get it all down. And we were lucky enough to actually have the brother of the owner of the company give us a little bit of his time, sit down with us, and give us a message for anyone who might be considering coming to visit Iwaki. Kanari Toshiaki desu. Kochira no Fukushima Ken Iwaki Shi. Iwaki Shi no Chuo Ichiba no Hou de Maiyasa Uchi no Shacho no Mekiki no Kuro no Ii Tomoyo de ne. Hai. Ma Ginmi ni Ginmi shite. で、
With my belly full of some of the most amazing seafood I've ever had, I headed down to the peninsula again because I wanted to see what the views were like as the sun was setting. It was incredible and definitely a highlight for me would have to be the lighthouse that I went to see and it was so cool to see just as the shadow would pass over it as the sun went down. But again, that meant I burnt off all those calories and needed to eat. So what better place to enjoy but another local izakaya where they specialized in a lot of great Japanese sake from Fukushima. Uh, We've come to a place that has incredible selection in terms of the Nihonshu that they have on offer. We've gone for local, we've gone for Fukushima, and then within that you have a couple of different flavor profiles. You could go for a little sweeter, you could go for a little drier. My personal favorite is the drier of the options, and that is what we are going to try now. To my great honor and surprise, the master of the izakaya actually came out and poured for me. I will never forget this kindness. So cool. As is customary, come by. Oh my. <laughs> Absolutely delicious. It's a gentler flavor. If you've not tried Nihonshu before, don't be intimidated. It's really easy to like, almost too easy to like, in fact. I'll be definitely having a lot more of this. Sake, of course, isn't the only reason that locals come to visit the restaurant and hang out with the master san. There's a lot of great food as well. I enjoyed a whole lot of it when I was there, but rather I tell you what it is that they enjoy. I think it's better if you actually hear from them themselves why it is that they keep coming back and why they enjoy it so much here. For our second day, we ascended the mountains of Fukushima to once again do something, experience something that I never had before since living in Japan, or in fact, in my entire life. Today, we're at Abukuma Caves. I've never ever been to a cave before, and this one is quite extensive with a lot of interesting features. I think it's gonna be a lot of fun. So this cave was first found in 1969 in a quarrying operation, and then they later in the 70s opened it to the public. By 2004, over 19 million people have come to visit the cave. You can imagine then by now that it's been very, very, very popular. I think it'd be interesting to come here at all times of the year, but we're getting this very, very interesting experience out of winter where, look at all this ice that you're finding. It's giving it a very distinct vibe. There's a whole lot that's surprising me here. I thought that it was only going to be narrow and there's great expanses of space in some areas. I thought it was going to be cold and it's actually surprisingly warm. It maintains a temperature of 15 degrees Celsius all year round. Here we are at where they actually found the first initial entrance to the cave. You can see it was a mining operation when they busted through and you can see some of the old equipment and staircase that would have led down into it. What a day that must have been. Once you enter the cave and have got in a little bit further, you have two options before you enter the main cavern, one of which is the exploration course and one of which is the regular. We're gonna take the exploration course to make it just that much more exciting. Let's go. We just passed what was said to be where you purify your soul in the lake. Not much of a lake, more like a little pond. But I'll take anywhere I can purify my soul. They're not kidding when they call this the adventure course. It is low, you gotta watch your head. I will say though, I'm 6'1", and it's totally doable, so don't be afraid if you're a little bit taller to get through here. You can do it. 
no exaggeration, that has some serious Indiana Jones-like qualities to it. And I'm not talking about like Kingdom of the Crystal Skull letdown. This is more like Holy Grail or Ark of the Covenant cool stuff. We found our way to the main cavern of the whole system and it is impressive. If you are the sort of family that has some kids who love the jungle gym or climbing around cool obstacles, you're gonna have a lot of fun in here. Maybe that's just the child in me that never got older, but I'm really enjoying it. Never at any point in our exploration was I expecting cave wine, but here it is. Apparently the characteristics of the cave make it really good for storing and maturing the vintage. The consistency of the temperature means that it smooths out much better than it would in other locations. And you can grab it from the gift shop for 2,000 yen, about $20 USD. Very cool. I'm always calmed by the spiritual locations that you can visit in Japan, whether that's a shrine or a temple. Each in the different prefectures that you find them offers you a different feeling, a different way that you can be at peace. And as that this was my first time visiting Fukushima, I'd heard that there was a quite beautiful place to visit, and so made some time to drop by there and after all the running around that we had done, take a moment, slow down, breathe, and enjoy a bit of the unique serenity that can be found in Japan. This is Shiramizu Amidado, and it was first built many hundreds of years ago in 1160 by the Fujiwara clan. It became the one and only national treasure of Fukushima in 1952. As of 2011, it actually suffered a great deal of damage from the earthquake at that time, but was repaired and then reopened for 2012. It is one of these beautiful, serene places in Japan that is beautiful all year round, but I would say especially so in the fall and spring. My favorite season is fall, and the fall colors here would be absolutely unbelievable. If you were looking for a nice, peaceful way to spend your afternoon, walking around the grounds here would definitely calm you down and be a great place to get a breath of fresh air. I was genuinely surprised to see that there was a Hawaiian-themed resort here in Fukushima, Japan, even more so to discover that at one point they had actually made a hula-themed movie. For me, the highlight was hanging out with the performers because you could really feel just how passionate they were about this particular performing art, but as well I made time to enjoy some relaxation in the spa. Aloha, welcome to Spa Resort Hawaiians. They got a lot to do here, pools, water slides. Never did I think I would be going down one in January, but here we are bending reality. Let's try it out. Perhaps not quite so nimble now at 37 than I once was at 10 years old going down water slides on Vancouver Island, but I enjoyed this experience nonetheless and I'm happy to report that they were very, very fast. Afterwards, it gave me a great excuse, too, to go and try out the more relaxing pools that they had. Bubbly, good for when you got sore muscles. They had quite a large variety at the resort. And then, most interesting for me, was sitting down with the different performing artists to hear what they had to say about each of their respective arts. そうですね。フラを an interesting detail for Yuya, the fire dancer I sat down with, is that he had actually competed and come in first runner-up in Hawaii. 
オリジナルの技とか考えなきゃいけないんでそういうとこも難しいしあとはその踊りの本来の目的である戦いを表現するのが落とさないようにやりながらこの戦いを表現するのが難しいです。ダンスはダンスなんですけどやっぱりそのさっき言ったように戦いの踊りっていうところですかね。やっぱりショーだとやっぱ自分たちもパフォーマンスなんで笑顔で踊ったりするんですけど本来のファイヤーダンスはあの戦争戦いなんでもう大会は笑顔だともう減点されちゃうんでも怒った顔でやるっていうのが特徴ですかね。If you've never tried a private onsen, have you ever lived? Yes, you have. It's very, very rare to do, but it shouldn't discourage you from trying. It was, in fact, another check mark on the long list of first times for me. I'd never enjoyed one before. It put me in the perfect mindset, though, for the very busy day and final one that we had in Iwaki, where we would check out a coal and fossil museum to get in touch with Iwaki's history, a sake brewery, and once more, delicious, huge Dekamori Iwaki food. We've come to the Iwaki Fossil Museum today to explore a little bit of the town's history and discovered some cool details. For example, they found the first long necked dinosaur fossil in this area. It's called the Futaba Saurus Suzuki. Futaba named after a region, and then Suzuki named after the high school student who actually found it. Kind of cool. Much as I enjoyed the fossils, they were really cool at scale, and again, something I'd never seen before, this all for the first time for me. It was the Cole Museum that stuck out and stayed with me afterwards. Getting to see the conditions that people worked in at that time just to be able to survive was mind blowing. And I had a new appreciation for the effort that my civilization I live in now was built on. It would not be possible without. Anything less than what you would call the sacrifice of these generations that came before me. This was yet again another experience I will ever forget. Sake is one of Japan's great gifts to the rest of the world. Whatever flavor preference you may have, soft, sweet, dry, you'll find something that suits you. In Iwaki, there are two major breweries. We went to visit the smaller of the two. The master brewer there, whose family had been running this brewery for generations, sat down with us and explained. A little bit of their history as well as their signature sake. Well, どうやらあの方の頃にまああの頃もやはり許可必要だったんでその頃に許可をいただいたという感じですね。はい、どちらかというと純米酒がメインでですからあのこうきらびやかではないんですが、まあ、あの米の味を出したなんかあのゆったりと飲める酒かなと思って作っております。えー、と純米酒ですからそんなおおあのすごい辛口っていうのはないんですがまあいやいや辛口じゃないでしょうか。We've done it! Procured the most massive confectionery I've ever seen in my entire life. All we have to do is find a great place to sit down. There's a park nearby, and we're going to unbox this huge ball of sugar. Let's go do it. Dekamori is essentially an oversized food item, and they were originally distributed around Japan for people who are working in blue collar jobs where you're doing a lot of hard work and you're very, very hungry. Here in Owaki, it is no exception. They have this. It was interesting to talk to some of the shop owners because they said that actually for them, this isn't Dekamori. It's not considered that large for them personally, but it is still considered of that variety. We have a massive cream puff. So, opening this up, statistics will throw at you here. It is 1.2 kilograms and it is 25 centimeters in diameter. 
Now, to uh, make it not seem so insane, when we were speaking with the shop and looking up some details concerning it, actually it's less that an individual would consume this, and a lot of people are getting this for the purpose of birthday parties or in replacements of cakes. So crazy though it may seem, it's actually very practically purchased here. This looks amazing. Well, there is no turning back now. Let's dig in and see what this is all about. Okay, we've got a little cream here. It looks incredibly flaky and light, just as you'd hoped it would be. Mmm. And it is. Wow. It's like eating a fluffy little cloud covered in sugar. Hmm. <laughs> what an amazing trip. So many firsts. And really doing what I love most in Japan, that's exploring a place that I've never been before. Signing off, I'll just say thank you so much to the people and city of Iwaki. You made it so special, and I really can't wait to return again. I surely will.